How you guys doing today? It's been a while. I've been wanting to do a video about a dream God gave me about a month ago. Very powerful dream um, about what's coming, upcoming things. It was very prophetic. And also, I want to parallel that with a dream that a good brother of mine had. On uh, I know him just from Facebook, but he's a great brother. I've been following him for a long time. Chris Bennett. Follow him on Facebook. Chris Bennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -T. Guys, solid prophet um, not out for the glory he's out for God's glory to see God move and to see God see God's kingdom established on earth as it is in heaven so just very quickly uh, a quick quick reference Job 30 through 15 I'm, I'm reading it because I haven't memorized it yet it says in a dream in the vision of the night when deep sleep falls on men while they slumber on their beds and then 16 do I have it up uh, no, I don't. I thought I did. It's really good. I'm going to look it up here. Job 33, 15. I love this scripture, but the whole thing is really good. Okay. Well, they put it all here. Okay. In a dream, a vision of the night, when sound sleep falls on men while they slumber on their beds, that he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction, that he may turn a man aside from his conduct and keep man from pride. So dreams can direct us. It's like, as it says here, it's like a direction, you know. He seals their instruction while we slumber. And we know that in Acts uh, 2.28, Joel 2.28 and Acts 2.17, we know that it says, it shall come to pass in the last days, that I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So um, there's a lot that's happening right now, a lot of revelation that's happening. You calm down a little bit. Come here. It's going on right now. So anyway, with that, I want to read Chris's dream first. It's very powerful. So he's very prophetic, and this is of things to come, okay? I believe this is happening fairly soon. I never give times, but fairly soon. I'm in another open vision or dream, and also, sorry about the background noise, I'm, uh, I'm cooking with my air fryer. I'm in another open vision or dream, in a beautiful place of carefully cultivated garden, a, a, a carefully cultivated garden, beautifully manicured lawn, sculpture flower beds, carefully shaped and maintained hedges, and pathways, again, neatly clip, clipped, trimmed, and sculpted. There's profusion of what I would regard as cutting flowers, various varieties, all ready for cutting and displaying in vases, etc. And idyllic, all idyllic and peaceful. Yet something is amiss. There's a foreboding atmosphere. I'll pay attention to this part because my dream is really kind of similar. It's about the atmosphere. There's a foreboding atmosphere, a simple something's not right feeling. Not dark, yet somehow is dark and forbidding. Suddenly the whole garden starts to rumble and shake. The whole scene begins to crumble and fall in ruins. People appear and they're running, panicking, fleeing from something dark and terrible. It all fades and becomes lost to sight, hidden by the smoke and dust. So, the, so Lord, what was that all about, please? I paused at this point to watch Derek Johnson and Steve Schultz on Elijah's dreams. Honestly, the vision was a warning of some of the things I heard. The immediate thoughts the Holy Spirit put to me were these. Everything you're watching happen in the USA right now is an illusion to awaken the people of America and the world, to enable the execution of God's own reset plan. My own thoughts were along the lines of, but this is getting bizarre. The border crisis, the out of control judicial system, the persecution of President Trump, all these and much more are real. I heard this response. They are not surreal that they cannot be stopped. The enemy is working frantically to keep all his plates spinning, but one by one they are falling and soon they will be stopped altogether. People, it's time for all of us to get into the prayer closet. The intercessors have carried us thus far, but they now need us all to pitch in to help. Yeah, I'm an intercessor, you guys. It gets tough. I've been interceding for this nation for revival, standing in the gap for mercy for this nation. I'm not bragging, but I've been doing this like 1984. Five. And more, the more intercessors, the better. If one can put to flight a thousand and two ten thousand, think if we get multitudes praying, 
praying for the takedown of the wicked, praying for revival, praying for mercy for the nation, standing in the gap, making that wall that God will not destroy the land according to Ezekiel 22 30. Okay, Trump needs our support like never before. The decisions he is about to call need a wisdom that can only come from the Lord. The revelations to which we are all about to be exposed need for us to be in constant prayerful attention. We will all need the reassurance of our eternity. We will all need the reassurance of our eternity as this scenario unfolds before us. We need our faith and trust in the Lord to be higher, greater, more certain than it's ever been before. We are entering into a period of great darkness and possible uncertainty, and our faith needs to be rock solid. Yes, Lord. Jesus Christ is our rock. He is our salvation. Discernment is desperately needed in these times, and we need that rock solid relationship with Him, an immovable, unshakable faith in Jesus Christ, a faith that will also draw others toward Him as they see our serenity in the face of danger, our calmness in the face of panic, our assurance in the face of doubt, in short, as they see our faith in action. I'm not the only one who sees these things. The company of prophets is still active. And I totally agree that the church will be like the calming force in the midst of the storm and will go into atmospheres and literally change atmospheres. You know, um, I believe there will be portals of God's glory all over the earth. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be worldwide. Okay, now I'll get into my dream. Uh, about a month ago, less than a month ago, I don't know, three, maybe, maybe a month, not quite a month. Anyway, in my dream, I learned to surf at uh, 32nd Street in Newport Beach. You know, I hung out there a lot as a kid, and I love that beach. I still go there and visit it. I love it. Anyway, in my dream, I was like sitting on that beach, but I wasn't surfing. I was just watching the surfers around, th it was like 32nd, and the jetty was like right in front of me, and it was a calm... I mean, the, the day couldn't have been more serene, calm, seagulls flying, you know, just making their noises, just very, very peaceful atmosphere. Like he talked about the atmosphere uh, and, and it was a similar type thing, like his atmosphere is beautiful and perfect and all of a sudden it switched. And then all of a sudden in my dream, a very par parallel to Chris's dream, this this huge storm like squall, I mean, it comes out from deep in the ocean very quickly it just comes to land very quickly and the surfers are all scrambling to get out of the water and it, the atmosphere changed from one of serenity to and peace to and I wasn't expecting it to one of just chaos it was chaos in the atmosphere I picked my stuff up and if you know anything about that beach it's real big and uh, I started to walk off the beach and as I'm walking uh, you can see Balboa you can see the back bay you can see inland to the left and every, as I looked in where the wind's blowing hard all of a sudden, which wasn't blown before, it's chaotic. Everything, there's just chaos. That's all I can say inland. There's chaos everywhere. I can't explain everything. It's just too much. It was just over, it was an overload of chaos. I mean, I think there was like accidents and things, but the thing I saw literally right in front of me, a quarter mile from me, I see this helicopter. It's doing a nosedive. I mean, it's coming down and it's going to crash. It's getting very close to the ground. And I just say, Lord, no instantly that helicopter was doing this instantly it leveled and it landed perfectly and i woke up and and god just so it was so clear to me chaos is coming you know it's a deep state fall and as i shared in other videos we're coming into revelation 18 where babylon has fallen babylon's about to fall she's about to see double for iniquity this wicked babylonian spirit that's been throughout ages and really has been consumed by these illuminati's you know, Rothschild's Kazarian Mafia has been the main carrier of that for years now, running the world with their wickedness, so they're coming down. Revelation 18, the Lord spoke to that to me like four years ago, or over four years now. Read Revelation 18, this is what's coming on the cabal. Read it, it will blow your mind. It's all about them receiving double for the, that cup that she mixed in chapter 17, the cup that she mixed of her full of iniquities and abominations, the mystery of Babylon, the harlot, but the cup she mixed, mixed double for her iniquity. In one hour, her judgments, and one day, her flat, or one, one hour, yeah, one day, her plagues, one hour, her judgments. It's coming suddenly. Everything they do is in Revelation 18 and their demise. So the Lord showed me in this dream, just like Chris's, where Chris's dream was like how discernment's needed in these times, uh, an immovable, unshakable faith in Jesus Christ, a faith that will also draw others towards him as they see our, the serenity in the face of danger, our calmness in the face of panic. 
the Lord so spoke to me that we will be the neutralizing force to come into regions where there's chaos going on, maybe there's rioting or whatever, bring prayer teams, and I, this is what I believe God really showed me, and we will pray and see the atmosphere shift. Bonnie Chavda did that a while back during the, the riots in Chicago. Chicago. She had a team of intercepts come and literally changed the atmosphere of what was going on in that city and in that, that area. She walked the whole area and they interceded and they changed the atmosphere. And we can do the same thing, church. It's going to be a time a, a time of real intercession that's going to be needed, seriousness with God, a time of waking up. God's going to wake his church up. When your judgments come, the people of the world learn righteousness. So many people are going about their, their lives, just all they care about is themselves and are focused inwardly. There's no one helping their brothers and their sisters. You know, I mean, it's happening, but I'm saying Christians, many Christians that just go to church on Sunday, they need to wake up. They need to realize they need to do the work. They need to go out and evangelize. They need to tell people about Jesus. Feed the poor. Help the hungry. Help the hurting. Help the homeless in whatever way you can. You know, we can do a lot. I've helped the homeless a lot in my, in my past. I want to do a lot more. God's going to bring finances into the church. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. It's coming. So there's going to be a great shift. The shaking, you know, Hebrews says that, um, that he will shake all things so that those things... He will shake everything so that those things which cannot be shaken will remain. And that's what we're coming into. We're coming into the greatest revival we have ever seen. I'm not a doomsdayist. I'm not an escapist. I believe God's glory is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Just like, just like it says in Habakkuk 2.14. I believe in the last days his mountain will be established on top of the mountains and exalted above the hills. And all nations will stream to it just like it says in Isaiah 2.2. 2. That's just scripture, guys, about the last days. I didn't make it up. We've got a wrong theology that's been brought into the church by an evil man named John Darby, who was a Mason, who brought up dispensationalism, escapism, and Zionism into the church. Uh, my other videos talk about that. So the earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. He's going to do a new thing. He's going. There's going to be a paradigm shift in the earth. There's going to be a paradigm shift in Christians as God wakes up lukewarm Christians and puts us on fire for him. So with that, I'll say a quick prayer so he can go, what do you want? Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for this day. I thank you that you're moving in this earth, Father. I thank you, God, that mercy triumphs over judgment, God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are going to burn up the wicked like dross, Father God, like chaff, Father. They'll be like chaff in the wind, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, your face is against those who do evil, to cut them off from the face of the earth. That word means destroy, and I'm talking about the reprobates. That means a mind of no return, Lord. Those, no, those minds of no return, Lord, those reprobates. Those people beyond redemption, those seared consciences, Lord God, that continually carry a perpetual knowledge of sin forward. You are dealing with this Kazarian Mafia, Lord, these Rothschilds, Father God, these Rockefellers, Lord, these Gateses and the Soroses, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God. These Schwabs and Harari's, Lord. All these wicked players, Lord, and all their puppets in Washington, Lord God. I declare that vision by Timothy Dixon, that whirlwind, Lord, will come in and clean out the Capitol building, Lord God. There will only be a, few, a couple good people left, Lord. God, exalt this nation, Lord God, I pray, Lord. As we're humble, Lord God, then you will exalt us, Father God. You will have mercy upon us, Lord, as you humble us, Lord, when your judgments come. The people of the world learn righteousness, Lord. But, Father, we cry out for an exalting in this nation, Lord God, as we turn back to you, that you would exalt this nation and use it to be the city set on a hill, to use it to be the great nation that sends out, Lord God, labors thrust out it balls labors into the harvest lord god not just in the united states but throughout the world use us lord god far above and beyond anything we could ask think or imagine use us god our lives are yours we offer ourselves up as living sacrifices god holy and acceptable in your sight god because you are a good and reasonable father lord we're yours use us god set us on fire in jesus name bless everyone watching this video in jesus name lord amen you guys like, share, subscribe, I pray, I ask in Jesus' name. God bless.